What's going on everyone and welcome back to another video. Today is going to be a bit of an advice video, I've done over 25 of them previously. The link to that will be at the end of the video if you want to check out any other videos that I've recorded like how to buy your first car and other videos very similar to help save you money. Today though we're going to be covering how to get cheaper car insurance, especially here in the UK without a black box that tracks you everywhere keeps a record of your speed and, and what speed limit zones you may have exceeded and all that sort of stuff. So today we're going to be focusing on getting cheap insurance without a black box. First though, I do want to give a few shout outs to those that have commented on my previous video and if you do want a shout out, then please be sure to subscribe, like the video and comment below as I do normally try and shout out people on two videos ago, anyway, on the PlayStation install video because I do like to do car modifications on the channel, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Ryan Wynn Stanley. Lewis Chafer and Alexandra Jesus, what a name. <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much you guys for commenting on the video. And like I said, if you want to shout out, just comment below and let me know what you think of this video. Now the first thing that you can look at is your insurance payment method. Depending on how you pay for your insurance will give a interest rate, you know, if you're paying for it monthly. And the ideal is to pay for it in one go, but not everybody can do that. So here are some other options to get the lower one-off payment but still be able to pay it back monthly. So one option if you can't pay it in one go and to still you know to still get the lower interest free sort of quotation where you're not paying for the, the benefit of paying for it monthly basically. One way to do it would be to get an interest free credit card. You pay for your insurance off in one go and then you pay the credit card back monthly over a 12 month period. That's something I've personally done and another thing that I've personally done on my first year's insurance was actually get a bank loan because the interest rate on the bank loan over a 12 month period was around 6% versus the interest rate from the insurance broker which was around 15%. So I saved myself 9% of interest over a two and a half thousand pound insurance quote I think it was for my first year. It might have even been more than that, it might have been three grand. But either way I did save myself a few hundred quid by doing you know, these two things and I've always paid for my insurance on an interest free credit card moving forward just because you get that lower one off payment and you can spread it out over the monthly duration of your insurance policy. Another thing you can do then is get enthusiast discounts. Now that might sound strange, but some modified car insurance brokers, which are normally cheaper by the way if you do have a modified car, I know this sounds completely backwards, but if you've got modifications on your car and you go with a specific broker that specializes in your car, be it a Japanese car, a classic car, a modified car, the insurance is normally cheaper and that's my experience of comparing a standard vehicle and a modified vehicle, trying to do the usual can I insure my standard vehicle for cheaper? It never works out. It's always better to get a modified vehicle insured by a specialist as a modified vehicle and insure all your modifications. But what they also do is they offer a discount for any sort of forums or groups or memberships that you hold with clubs that are centered around your particular car. My theory is, is that this is something that they do because somebody who's enthusiastic about the car probably won't want to crash it just a hunch. Now the next three points are much more generic. The third being adding a named driver. Now if you add that named driver to your insurance policy, it splits the annual mileage. This is out this is the only way I can think of it reducing your policy, but it would split that annual mileage that you declare between you and that driver, therefore reducing the risk that you, a new driver, would have you know in crashing that vehicle or in causing some sort of damage with your vehicle. So that's why I believe adding a named driver reduces the policy you know, premium, but you can add anybody as a named driver and it won't impact their no claims discount if you crash it and it won't impact anything at all to do with them if you as the first driver on the insurance policy do anything with your car. So that gives them a bit of reassurance if they are unsure then tell them to look it up themselves, share this video with them but as a name driver you're only responsible for that vehicle if you crash it as the name driver and, and you're you know in the vehicle responsible for it and it's driving you know it's it's time on the road so don't worry if you are being asked to put your details down for a new driver as a, a second driver as a named driver on the policy all it means is that you can drive their vehicle and it'll probably reduce their premium by a good few hundred quid or at least that's my experience so think of people that have had no claims discounts for 10 20 years think of people that are you know higher in their uh, in their insurance um experience shall we say you know more years under the belt in with with driving and things like that and think of people as well in professions 
um, a doctor for example that they need their license you know somebody who is um, a professional uh, at you know very high level is going to be more responsible or at least that's how the insurance brokers see it and it's normally cheaper for a doctor to get insurance than a mechanic so something for you to think of you know when you're considering adding a name driver to your policy Another thing that you can do is you can park the car on your driveway. Now by parking your car on a driveway, you avoid potential accidents when parking it on the street, on the road, because it's out of the way if it's on a private driveway. You also avoid any damages to a garage. If it's parked in a, gar a garage your car overnight, the insurance companies normally charge you a premium for that. The reason for that is that your home insurance won't cover you as, as a vehicle owner if your vehicle gets stolen and they have to damage the garage door or something like that to get to the vehicle. Your home insurance will direct you to the vehicle insurance provider because the motive, if you like, for the, um, the criminal breaking into your garage and damaging the garage door was to steal your car. So that's a good point to remember. And if you have a garage and a driveway, park it on the drive. It's cheaper. And finally, the very last piece of information and advice that I can offer you in getting cheaper insurance without fitting a black box would be to compare, you know, use the comparison websites, compare all the insurance companies that you can, and then go direct. Direct normally it's a few pounds cheaper, but also there are some insurance companies that don't give quotes on comparison websites. And it's those companies out of my, you know, out of my experience that are normally a little bit cheaper. And a lot of the specialist insurers as well that specialise in low mileage, for example, low, low annual mileage vehicles, um, Japanese vehicles, modified vehicles, all that sort of stuff, those are not on any comparison websites at all that try and specialize in your particular car to make it cheaper for you. Now, if you found this video helpful and these points that I've just mentioned useful, please consider sharing this video as well with somebody else that might need the same advice and could do with saving some money themselves. So as mentioned at the start of this video, let me know what you think of this particular video down below in the comments. Also, check out these two videos here, where I do have a, a number of videos around you know, vehicle advice. And um, yes, yeah, save some money. And also, if you're interested in modifying vehicles, then check out the other tab here on the right hand side. I've been modifying this particular vehicle and I've got a couple of other projects that are ongoing but aren't as progressed as this one on the channel. And finally, thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.